Hi, welcome to Two Tired Teachers. Today we're going to be talking to you about camping in and around the North Rim of the Grand Canyon. First we want to talk about camping in the campground at the North Rim. Folks, after having visited the Mighty Five, the North Rim of the Grand Canyon campground was wonderful. Many larger sites, some pull-through sites. Uh, I think they were all pull-through sites. Pull-through or curbside. Um, but, a couple of things. You need to know the size of your trailer. And I'm going to insert a clip right here showing our first site and something you may want to consider. Okay, we are at the Grand Canyon North Rim and we have a couple of nights and a couple of different sites because we couldn't get reservations in two. But I want to explain to you why, while we're still hitched, why I'm stopping way back at this end of our site instead of centering the trailer in the middle of our site because this is a pull-through site. And so it just depends when you get there, you got to look at it and decide. Here, the closest tree to the trailer is this one. And we have essentially nothing on the other side except this concrete barrier here where there's a water thing. So as we pulled in, if you look at the front of our site, and I'm sorry I'm making you dizzy walking around, but we're still hitched. Up at this end of our site, we've got trees hugging both sides. There's a tree here and there's a tree here. And my guess is if I look, I'm going to, yeah, I see some scars on these trees where people have pulled trailers through. I probably could make it, but I don't plan to. Tomorrow what I plan to do, and one of the reasons I parked as far back as I did is because if you'll look right now, our trailer and the van are lined up straight, which means it's going to be a whole lot easier to hitch. So I didn't want to pull all the way up here because I wanted to leave myself some room to get the van straight to hitch it up tomorrow. Tomorrow when I hitch, I don't plan on trying to pull through these trees that are just, I mean, if you look, this one's on the um, pavement here and that one's on the pavement here. They're right across from each other. So that's going to be way too tight for me to personally feel comfortable pulling a trailer through. My plan is tomorrow, when we move to our other campsite that's in the North Rim, is I'm just going to back out on the road and then pull forward. So, I'm saying that because, you know, sometimes you pull in and you say, oh, this is a beautiful site, let's get centered, let's get going. That may not be the best. I try to stop with hitching in view. <laughs> It's not just unhitching. I could pull up there and unhitch in a heartbeat. But then trying to hitch tomorrow is going to be a different thing. So, um, just thought I would share that with you while we're here live. <laughs> and, well, it's not going to be live by the time you see this, but this is a real life situation and just thought I would explain that sometimes before you unhitch, it's a good idea to look at how am I going to hitch when we get ready to leave. It was a beautiful site. It was a large site. And we enjoyed it tremendously. But aside from the spacing of those trees, that may mean you don't get to put slides out. Yes. I zoomed in on a bus or a Class A from our second site, and I think he had both slides out at first, but evidently Cars couldn't pass uh, because his was actually kind of one of those pull-up sites. So, um, like Mylena said, you they actually did accommodate some decent size RVs. Uh, there are some that, I'll show you the map, there's a whole little section that's designated just for tents. Mm -hmm. And that is literally, you have a parking spot and then there are tents. Uh, but that was, they're beautiful sites, and some of them literally are right on the rim. And for those of you who don't have an RV or a tent, there are cabins there as well. And uh, they're pretty cabins. And the lodge. And um, our understanding, we carry our meals. Uh, our understanding of the lodge was that if you wanted to eat there, you need to make those reservations about the time you make your camping yes. reservations. 
Um, but it is overlooking the canyon. Yes. It's gorgeous. Um, beautiful area. But when we were there, they weren't serving breakfast or lunch. There's a deli that's open, but... Uh, we were there the week they opened. We didn't yes. get there the day they opened, but we were there the week they opened. And so, we asked about dispersed camping. Yes. And so, we were told there's tons of dispersed camping. We had done dispersed camping for the Mighty Five and two national monuments in Utah. And what we were accustomed to is there's a nice Forest Service road. You can go down less than a half a mile and there are clearly marked sites uh, lining that road. And that's really kind of what we were expecting. We did ask a ranger, can we have a rim view with as low as our van is, two-wheel drive, care, you know, towing a, a, an RV. He said, yeah, try the East Rim. Yeah. We drove to the East Rim. It was five miles out, five miles back, and it took us an hour. The road was fine. It's a washboard road, but it was a washboard road. We're driving basically 10 miles an hour. Yes. And we got out there, and there were six or seven sites only two of those were available. Yes. And so our thought was we were, we had to get out and stop just for a few minutes to get off of this uh, once we got out there and realized if we took the trailer, we took the pets, we'd all be crazy yes. by the time we got there. They would be miserable. And so we decided we found another dispersed road that was on 611 if you're familiar with that area on 22 we found a couple of sites that we yes. thought we could do but honestly that night once we realized it, it, it clicked in my mind we from great... from the fee station it's 11 it's 10 miles down to the road that turns off to the campground then it's another mile and a half or two miles down to the village, village the, the rim, and all of that. We had a great time at the North Rim. We loved we would it. Go loved back, it. but we were we had seen what there is to see, and we weren't going to be we making a forty mile in. round trip mm -mm. from from where you go in, then to go out to where the dispersed camping is to go back in. We weren't going to do that. There is a DeMont campground. We want to show you some video yes. of that as well. And half of those sites are first come, first serve. Um, honestly, I, we've heard people that say they prefer that campground. I prefer the one in the North Rim. I do too. It's a part of the net. But they're both fine. Uh, but we were going to be doing dispersed. And so yes. that night I told Mylena, we weren't really pleased with our options. A lot of people are. Well, let's go back up to Jacobs Lake, which is the road that turns 63 miles to go down. Beautiful places. Tons. All we saw, around there. We saw lots of people doing dispersed camping there. And so we decided we needed somewhere to just chill for a couple of days because we were on the go the whole time we were at the North Rim because it was gorgeous and beautiful and we knew our time there was limited. We were on the go the entire time we were at Zion, so we knew we needed some down days. Before we start the drive home. And so the morning we were getting ready to leave our campsite at the North Rim, it occurred to me, if we're not going to be at the North Rim, Jacobs Lake is a beautiful area, but why stop there? Yes. We actually had four, we're going to have three nights on our way home, four drive days. Let's get one of those drive days yes. out of the way. So actually, our dispersed camping for the North Rim is about an hour away from the Petrified Forest. <laughs> Nowhere near the North Rim, if you don't know that. Um, but we, this is going to be our third night here in this dispersed site. And it has been perfect. Just wanted to let you know, if you have four-wheel drive, I think your options of dispersed camping around the North Rim would be incredible. Um, we loved the campground at the North Rim. We did see some big rigs there. We had no trouble. And I had told Mylena, depending on what the site looks like, we may have to back in, unhitch, and then park mm -hmm. behind it. Well, ours, fortunately, those close trees were on the other side. And so uh, we made it. We made it fine. We loved the Grand Canyon North Rim. And, 
and our preference if it were Demont or the North Rim campground we'd stay in the North Rim campground the, the elevation there is like seven to nine thousand feet depending on where you are there's a scenic drive and different stuff like that so um, there was one little patch of snow that was still there <laughs> uh, when we got there but um, it was like Malina said we definitely would would go back there again in a heartbeat and so these are our opinions we know other people's opinions may differ but this was our experience. We loved being there. And um, like we said, the dispersed camping up around Jacob's Lake looked amazing. Yes, it did. And had we not had such a long drive home, we would have stayed there for several nights. But but uh, after being gone for a month and not doing this full time, that's what we were considering. It's about time to get home. <laughs> so anyway, we hope you've enjoyed our look at the camping options around Grand Canyon North Rim. And as always, thanks for watching Two Tired Teachers.